In this presentation, we will assign costs to units using the weighted average method. In our problem, this was the given data we've seen in prior presentations along with this data, this being the unit data that we have, this being the cost data that was given. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We then calculated in a prior presentation the compute equivalent units of production. So these are the equivalent units of production with regards to materials and conversion. We broke them out to the units completed and transferred out of the department and the work in process because those are the two things that we're concerned with because those are the two things we want to use in order to allocate out our dollar amounts to the dollar amounts that are still in work and process at the end of the time period in our department, the amount that has been transferred out. We then calculated the cost per equivalent unit to help with that, with that transfer process. And we have that broken out by materials and conversion, these being the dollar amounts, the total dollar amounts given over here. We know the dollar amounts from the beginning process and the amounts added. What we need to consider then are the amounts, dollar amounts that are still in our department and the dollars that have should be transferred out. In order to do that, then we calculated the uh, totals. This is the total dollar amounts that we need to account for. This is the total dollar amount that we need to account for. And then we divided that out by from materials and conversion by the equivalent units of production uh, per department. And then we've got our cost per equivalent unit. We can then take this cost per equivalent unit and multiply it times the appropriate amount for the units completed and transferred out and the work and process that's still there as of the end of the time period and in so doing apply out our costs. To do that, we're going to start off with the ending work in process uh, in units. We're going to go to materials. We're going to get that from our table up top. So here's the work in process at the end of the time period for materials. We want that 594. And then for conversion, we're going to say this equals, and we're going to do the same for the conversion. So here's the conversion uh, 297. That's from our table we did in a prior presentation. Then we're going to pick up our cost per equivalent unit. So we'll pick up our cost per equivalent unit. We calculated last time the 21. So this equals the 21. And then this is going to be the 15 for the conversion. So 21 for materials, 15 for the conversion. And that's going to give us then the cost of ending work in process. And we will, of course, multiply those two out. So we've got the units of the 594 times the dollar amount of 21. We're going to apply out the 12,474 for the materials and then the 297 units times the $15 amount, uh, 4,455. So we'll do that here. This equals the 594 times the 21. This equals the uh, 297 times the 15. And that gives us the 4,455. And then if we sum those two up, this plus this will be the 16,929. So this equals the sum of these two items, the 16,929. Now we're gonna take the units completed and transferred out. And so we'll take a look at the uh, materials, units completed and transferred out, and that's going to be the uh, 5,940. And then we'll do the same for the conversion. That's gonna be from our table up top. And that's the 5,940 as well. And then we're gonna take once again, the cost per equivalent unit, which is this number, same cost per equivalent unit it's the 21 and the 15 and then we'll multiply those items out and that'll be the cost of units transferred out the cost of the units that are no longer in our department 5940 times 21 that gives us the uh, 124 740 and then the 5940 times the 15 is the 89 100 so if we multiply those out then this equals this number times this number 
and this equals the 5940 times the 15 dollar amount we then add these two up that's going to give us the uh, 213840 so we'll say this equals the sum of these amounts there's that and now for our check figure this should add up to the total cost right because before we had this total cost this 23769 that we needed to apply out to the units that are still uh, in our in, in our department and those that were transferred out. So this then is the units that are still in our department, uh, are not this is the dollar amount of, that's still in our department and those transferred out in terms of dollars. So now if we sum this up for our check figure, it should be this plus this, which will give us the check figure here, letting us know that we applied this out. And if you think about it, mull over this calculation and you'll consider that this is, we're basically using a kind of a ratio type of calculation uh, to figure out the application of this dollar amount based on uh, the, the equivalent number of units, cost per equivalent units, to these two components. Because these two components, of course, add up to the uh, 6534 to the totals. And therefore, uh, it, has to, it has to work out to work out evenly. And this is just basically our check figure to make sure that we have done so.